Amen. So here's the question. See if you can get it. What is the one thing that all of those uh, clips have in common? They are all called assist in basketball. They're all assist. And we don't necessarily celebrate assist because everybody wants the ball and everybody loves to score. But the assist, the people that give the assist, put the scores in position so they can do what they're supposed to do. I remember in coaching high school, a lot of times there were students, I did not want the ball in their hand. It's like, pass the ball, Johnny's open under the basket, pass the ball, no, don't shoot it. Because an assist the guy that provides the assist and the guy that prov provides the made basket, they work in tandem together. And assists are celebrated in basketball even though everybody wants the ball, wants the rock, give me the rock, and everybody wants to score. A little uh, basketball factoid, only 35 different players, and this is a lot, in all-time history of basketball, only 35 of them actually had a 22 assist or more in a game. That is phenomenal, only 35. And that tells us most people want the ball in their hands. Not many people want to give it up. But the assists are the real star. The people that provide the assist are the real stars. John Stockton, one of the greatest point guards of all times, did 15,806 assist, 15,000 passes in his career. He was a good shooter in himself, but he learned the power of an assist. 15,000 times, instead of choosing to take the shot himself, he passed it off to someone else. Do you know that the scripture is full of incredible examples about assist? How many of you understand that our God wants to assist us in life? Our God is the all-time leader of the NBA and any other league in the World League. Our God is the all-time assist leader of history. And the Word of God says, yes, I have a scripture for you, Hebrews 13, 6, so we can say with confidence, the Lord is my helper, or the Lord provides me with assistance. The Bible says we're supposed to say this out loud. Do you know that we work, the Bible says we work together with the Lord? Do you understand that you've got to work in uh, synchronization with God? It's a, it's a team effort. Here the Bible says you've got to say with your mouth, the Lord is my helper. And if you'll confess that with your mouth, God will become your helper in any, any area. The Lord is my healer, and he becomes my healer. The Lord is my financier. The Lord is my protection over COVID-19. And he becomes what you say. He also says in Scripture, whatsoever you ask, in my name, believe that you receive and you will have those things. That's working together with God. Look at this. We assist. Run up here, Jose. I want you to know Jose has been inducted on my team now. He even got a team jersey. I'm number one. He's number two. Notice that. Because he's a great assistant. Amen. You see, God is asking us. This is how this works in our life. God is saying... If you will speak the word, what you literally do is by speaking the word, you put the ball in my hands. For this example, I am playing God. Number one, I'm just playing God. All right, put the ball in my hands because my scoring per percentage is 100%. God is saying, I never miss. How many of you glad tonight God never misses today? <laughs> How many of you glad that the Bible says whatsoever you ask in my name? So this is how it works. We, we give the prayer 
So as we're praying, then we release that prayer into God's hands, and he says, I will do it for you. I will, I will cause the win. I will score the W. I will make it happen for you. Another scripture, give, and it shall be given unto you. That's the, what's the assistance we provide? God's like, I'm open, I'm open. Give me the rock. I can score for you. I can make it happen. I can multiply your finances. Uh, I can bring healing in your life. But it only happens as you give it up. You give up your prayer. Boom, God makes the score. You give up your declaration. Boom, God makes the score. score. You give up your finances and boom, God makes it happen for you. Amen. Do you see the scenario going on here today? Amen. Come on, give it up for Jose, my incredible assister. Not my sister, my assister. Amen. In the Word of God, all the way back in Exodus, as God was establishing precedent of how we were to be blessed. In Exodus chapter 13, verse number two, it says, dedicate to me every firstborn among the Israelites, the first offspring to be born of both humans and animals belongs to me. It's very powerful in the Hebrew language, this belongs to me literally means it's my property. It's almost as if from the very beginning of time, God was saying, my house my rules. My basketball, we're going to play by my rules. If I say it's a foul, it's a foul. If it's not a foul, it's a foul. See, we who have become Christians, 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 Christ-like, we have said, God, I realize that this earth is your house it's your ball, it's your gym, you set the rules, and if you want me to put you first in everything I have, then God, I'm gonna put you first, because just like a rebellious teenager who might be told, this is my house, and if you gonna live in my house and eat my food off my plate, you gonna play by my rules. When you get out of this house and you live on your own and you got your own apartment, then you can cap your attitude and act the way you want to, but as long as up you're up in my house, you're going to honor your mother, you're going to respect this family, and you're going to do your part to play by the rules. Thank you for your enthusiasm this morning. I see none of you have teenagers. Exodus 13, verse uh, 13, a firstborn donkey may be bought back from the Lord by presenting a lamb or young goat in its place, but if you do not buy it back or redeem is the uh, fancy King James word, you must break its neck. However, you must buy back every firstborn son is a very, very simple principle. If you don't give the first of your herd to the Lord, you will lose what you've been given. What you have will be taken from you. He that hath is given more because he is faithful over which he has, but he that holds back will not only lose what he has, but the opportunity to advance forward. It's a beautiful picture in the scripture because the donkey is an unclean beast, the lamb is a clean beast, and if you don't realize it, this is an Old Testament picture of Jesus Christ and the Father God and how God would give Jesus Christ to humanity unclean. He would give the spotless lamb, his son, as a tithe that heaven would offer its very best. And God, through Jesus, would redeem the uncleanness of man and break the power of sin so that we could receive right standing with God and live in his abundant life. Beyond that, the reason he set up this structure of tithing and putting God first in everything and giving God our best in everything was God says in verse number 14, and in the future, your children will ask you, what does all this mean? And then you will tell your children, God is into this posterity thing. I said, God is into this posterity thing. 
God is into the fact that God wants us to leave a legacy of faith to our children and our children's children. It matters to God. Right here at the beginning, he said this is one of the most important things to realize that one of these days your children and your grandchildren are gonna ask, why do we have to go to church? Why do we give God our first, our tithe? I've got $10 allowance. Why do I give that dollar to God? Why do we go to church and pray? Why when there's even coronavirus on do we honor God and we call on the name of the Lord and we don't walk in fear and we pray as a family why do we do these things why do I need to go to youth group why do I go to children's church why 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 he said in the future when they ask you why what does all this mean then you will tell them with the power of God's mighty hand The Lord brought us out of Egypt's bondage, the place of our slavery. Pharaoh stubbornly refused to let us go, so the Lord killed all the firstborn males throughout the land of Egypt, both people and animals, and that is why, that is why I now sacrifice all of the firstborn of my herd and all of the first fruit of my paycheck. I bring it to God because Because if it had not been for the Lord, we would still be in the world, still under the threat and still under the bondage and the fear and the hopelessness that leads to a life without God or that a life without God produces. Thank God we've been brought out of bondage and that's reason enough to put God first in all of our ways. Come on, somebody. God is saying, you are to provide If you'll give me the rock, I'm a high percentage scorer. Stop trying to score outside of your position. In basketball, we're like, this guy is hot from the right side. He makes it all the time from the right, except me. But I believe in the power of rebound. This guy's hot from the right, so feed him from the right side. Let him shoot, man. He's anointed from the right side. Get him the ball, get the hand, get the ball in his hands. God is saying, I'm open, I'm open. Why are you trying to be a ball hog when God knows how to score and cause the W to manifest in your life, in your finances, in your family, with your children? God said, I'm open, I'm open, I'm open. Give me the ball. Amen. So he gave us this example that the one, the first redeems the rest. The first buys back the rest. Buys it back from what? Buys it back from under the curse of the earth, the curse of lack, the curse of destruction. He said, it's as simple as this. I've got 10 $1 bills in my hand. The one of the 10, the first of the 10, the first redeems the nine. The first multiplies the nine. The one given to God. This is the assist. God's like, give me the rock. Give me the rock. I'm open. This is the assistance we provide to receive his ability up in our lives, in every part of our lives. The Word of God says, let's look at a scripture in uh, the New Testament, Luke chapter 16, talks about our fiscal and uh, due diligence, our responsibility concerning our finances, your finances, and my finances. This is the way Jesus is teaching us to live. Luke 16, verse 10, if you are faithful in little things, you will be faithful in large ones. Amen. You can't be faithful with a bicycle. You won't be faithful with an automobile. Hello. You can't teach a child how to be faithful and handle a BB gun. You don't need to be putting a shotgun in their hands. You have to be faithful at one level to be faithful 
right? If you can't be faithful flipping burgers down wherever, you probably won't be faithful owning your own company. If you can't show up on time, be a good worker, get there early, do a good job, keep your workplace clean, uh, workspace clean, keep a good attitude and have a smile on your face, then you probably will never have your own business uh, to be able to hire other people to flip burgers for you. This is what the scripture is saying, ladies and gentlemen. If you are faithful in little things, you will be faithful in large ones. It is the law of responsibility. The law of responsibility. Greater things will only come unless you've been faithful with the small things entrusted to you. You have to be faithful. So it's a trust. We don't own anything. We're only managers and stewards. Verse 11, and if you are untrustworthy about worldly wealth, the dinero, if you are untrustworthy, uh, untrustworthy about the dinero, who will trust you with the true riches of heaven. God's like, I wanna, I wanna give you some true riches. I wanna give you some real heavy stuff. I wanna bless your life. What is the kingdom of God? The kingdom of God is not meat nor drink, but it is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. And God is like, I wanna give you some righteousness and some peace and some joy in an experience in the Holy Ghost, but you can't experience the power of my kingdom if you don't operate in the laws of my kingdom. My ball, my game. My court, my rules. My house, my rules. Break the rules, and you mess up the system. We have to all be on the same page so that the blessings will flow freely into our lives. Verse number 12, and if you are not faithful with other people's things, right? Why should you be trusted with things of your own? Like, can can I borrow your car? Well, the last time you borrowed it, there was a scratch 10 feet long down the side of it. You left McDonald's, Wendy's, and Chick-fil-A wrappers on the inside. You spilled your old drink down in my floorboard, and that's the way you returned it. Like when I got out of my car, it was because my, my feet had sticky soda on the bottom. Like, bro, if you can't be faithful with another man's, you don't deserve your own. What's the moral to that story? Get faithful. Be responsible. God is calling us to responsibility. God is calling us to let him lead. Let's take the responsibility and give God the ball so that he can do what only he can do. The God who created everything that we see, that we touch, that we smell, uh, that we experience is the God who is Lord over it all. And if you need anything in your life, he can route it, he can send it, he will move it into your realm because it's all under his kingdom realm. It's all, it's all under his authority. The heavens are the Lord's, and the earth has he given to the children of men. We haven't done a great job with the things we've been given, the things that are in our charge. We have to continue to honor the God of heaven because it's heaven's blessing that causes the earth to be fruitful and to bring forth. No one, verse 13, can serve two masters, for you will hate one or love the other. You will be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and be enslaved by money at the same time. So he is calling us 
This law of responsibility calling us to be faithful with what we have and stop belly aching about what we don't have and be, be excellent where we are. Be really excellent and good and faithful. How are you treating your job that you have? Well, I want a new job. How are you treating the job that you have? How are you treating your employer? How are you treating your fellow employees? Uh, well, I'm just unsatisfied. Uh, you know, my marriage is just a mess and, you know, we're just falling out of love. How are you treating your spouse? How are you investing in your marriage? You think that you'd be happy somewhere else, but like they said, the grass is greener on the other side of the fence, but that's only because that's where the sewer runs. So you think you would be happy, but you'll find out you won't be happy in the end. Influence. How are you using your influence? How are you using your gifts? How are you using your finances? Because all of these are trust from the Lord. They, none of these things belong to us. Uh, we, Typically, when we build houses, we'll hire a guy to do the landscaping and uh, <clears throat> just say generically trees and grass and uh, sprinkler systems and whatever. Let's just say generically it was 5000 bucks, and in that, he's got cost, you know, the cost of the trees. The crawl, he didn't make the trees, uh, the grass, the sprinkler, uh, the piping, the PVC, the sprinkler heads. So, uh, you know, all, he's got all these costs. Now, Again, those are costs. That's not income, right? So if there's uh, $4,000 worth of cost, uh, that gentleman is not responsible to tithe on that $4,000 because it's not income. It was money spent. But let's say he reserves, and every businessman should do this, or you're going to be out of business. If you, don't, if you can't make a profit and you don't make a profit, you won't be around very long. You will be out of work. So it's good. The Bible said a workman is worthy of his hire. It's good for a man to make a profit and have a good wage to provide for his family. So this guy takes $1,000 out of this particular job. No problem. That's awesome. So what part of that 1000 belongs to God? It's not a trick question, folks. $100 is God's. Now, Maybe you can get this question. What hundred dollars? According to the scripture, thank you. The first hundred. That's important to God. Now look, this is not one of those legalistic things where, you know, OMG, before I could write the, the hundred dollars, my wife went to buy toilet paper and water at Walmart. Oh my God, we're cursed for the rest of the month. It's just saying we ought to make a habit. It's not after PUB. It's not after the light bill. It's not after my car payment to GM, GMAC. It's not after my mortgage. The first of the thousand is God's. Why? Back to Exodus. Because the first has a redeeming anointing on it. According to the scripture, I believe in a God who sits high but looks low and keeps score of our actions and our activities. You and I, Gentiles, non-Jews, we would not be having this conversation. We would not be in this building had it not been for a tither by the name of Cornelius in Acts chapter 10, whom the Bible says what he gave to God went into the heavens and came up as a memorial before the throne of God. God made note of it. And Cornelius is praying for salvation and for his household, and because of his offering, God sends him to the very house in Joppa where Peter 
the apostle Peter is having a revelation that God is now going to take salvation from just the Jews, the Jewish race only, and he is going to give it to the dogs. He is going to give it to the lost. He is going to give it to the heathen. And at that very time, Simon Peter walks down from the roof and Cornelius is knocking on the door and there is a connection and salvation is for you and salvation is for me because there was a faithful man who honored the Lord with his money before he probably even understand all the wherewithal of how this worked. You don't have to understand it all to operate in the principle. I had milk this morning and I do not know how a black cow eats green grass and produces yellow butter and white milk, but my God, I enjoyed that milk this morning. There's a lot I don't know, but I do know this. Jesus saved me. He found me. He loves me. I would not trade one thing for the life that I've enjoyed. I'm 53 now. I was saved at 12. I would not trade a thing, not trade a day. I believe the greatest life you can live is for the Lord. And if Jesus asked me to tithe, and Jesus asked me to put him for, I don't need to pray all night, I don't need to see the Greek and the Hebrew. I don't need to fast about it. I don't need to, well, God, uh, I know you're the better shooter, but. No, I'm gonna put the ball in his hands. I'm not stupid, because I know. I know this, this ball in my hand. <laughs> I missed a layup while ago. Of course, you gotta cut me some slack. I hadn't played in a long time. But like this ball in LeBron's hands, the master Jordan's hands, not today. He'd have to put on his cigar first. (laughs) But this ball in LeBron's hands, it's money. This might, am I going to do this? LeBron's, LeBron wants to play a pickup game with us? No, I got it. Mine. Be a ball hog when one of the greatest basketball players of all times on the floor. I'm giving it up. I'm giving it up, Jose. That caught you unexpected, didn't it? That's okay. I'm your mentor, you're the mentee. (laughs) Remember, number one, number two. (laughs) I'm just playing. So, (laughs) I'm gonna give it up to God. And listen, this this is universal. If you're a child of God and you're a Christ follower, it's, it's not complicated. The word of God sets forth this as our, as the priority for our finances, and that is, Give first, save second, live and spend thirdly. And if you will, if you will learn to just integrate that <clears throat> into your daily vibe, into your weekly vibe, husbands and wives come together around God's priorities in Scripture. Give save, live. God is going to be first. Then we are going to save and we're going to invest for the future because that is God's way. If I'm not responsible over the little, he will not make me responsible over greater things. And then what's left, we will spend. But in any reverse order, are you getting one of these out of order and unprioritized according to the scripture? It doesn't work. The system's broken. The wiring short circuits. 
things get out of whack. Your life begins to trouble out because we have to stay in line with God's priorities and God's ways for our life. Amen? He, when he is first, then he will make sure that we are blessed and that he can advance our lives the way he wants to. Uh, Luke 12, verse 30, people everywhere seem to worry about making a living, but your heavenly Father knows your every need and will take care of you. In other words, that's it. God is ready to assist us. God is ready to provide. He knows our address. In every arena, it requires us to give up something. You've got to give up before you go up. Verse 31, each and every day, he will supply your needs as you, as you seek his kingdom passionately above all else. What does that mean to seek God's kingdom passionately? It means, you know what? Your ball, your rules. Your house, house rules. I'm going to live by the precepts of the Word of God because that's how the kingdom of God functions. <laughs> you can't play basketball with football rules. You have to apply the rules to that particular game in order for it to be effective. If you don't apply God's laws to your life, it's not going to be effective for you. He promised in Malachi 3.10, I will open the windows of heaven for you. I will pour out a blessing for you that there will not be room enough to take it in. Try it. Put me to the test. Come on, give it up. Back. Give me the ball. Release it. Try me. I'm in position. It's a, you know, it's, it's also a very freeing thing to have God take the lead in your life. Amen. To put God in charge and let him be in control because then all the pressure is off of you. Amen. I look at people in our church that they've learned how to give it to God. I was talking about Manny and Nancy Echavarria this morning. He started out working for a, a health care provider just as an employee. Had a vision to own his own. He was faithful for years. Faithful in their tithing for years. Now God's given them their own business and over the course of the last couple years every month or so he'll come to me and say pastor there's another business they want us to take over their health care they want us to take over their uh, home health care business another business another entity's coming another agency's coming and God's just boom 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 but they were faithful in the little and guess what now they're being faithful in greater things. Last week just sowed a $10,000 seed to our new building program in Harlingen. Being faithful as God puts them on the climb. I'm talking about you too, Juan, you and Zida. It's been incredible to watch you include God at the beginning of your marriage together. Set goals. Juan sent me a picture of a little handwritten goal that they had set out when they made their pledge last year at the church and then put beside it, this is the income. We're giving this seed, but this is the income we desire to see God bring in. And I knew, we knew, of course, Juan before he got married, and we knew Juan initially because when we went to buy a car, he was the salesman down there. And we saw God take him from salesman into finance, and just continue to give him promotion after promotion after promotion. But this I know, he was faithful in putting God first when he was just a salesman. And now as God has accelerated him, he's able to give more because God is still first in his life. And, and here's the thing, 
God is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above and beyond all we could ask or think. So, in the poquito, put him first. In the grande, keep putting him first. Watch this. Because Juan, your grande, what you call in a grande, and man, wish I had a grande Starbucks green tea right now. I rebuke that thought in the name of Jesus. The spirit of distraction just came. Your grande right now, God calls your poquito. Like your current grande is just the floor. It's not the ceiling. It's the ceiling to where you were, but it's the floor to where you're going. Because God's kingdom is always elevated. And of course, all over this room, there are incredible champions of faith in this room today. People, testimony after testimony after testimony. You'll never lose as long as you put God in position to score. Come on, assist guy, real quick. Everybody stand up on your feet. We're we're winding it down. Stand up on the blue. Yeah. Old Testament. Old Testament. God told Moses, Moses, throw down your rod. What's in your hand? Throw it down and it'll become something supernatural. Moses threw it down. Come on, that's your cue, baby. Provide God with an assist, shoots, scores, Israel, deliver. (laughs) Abraham, even before that, Abraham, what do you see? Look up in the stars, change your name. You are no longer Abram, you are Abraham, you are mighty. I know your wife's been barren, and I know you're an old man now, 75, but you're gonna be a father of nations. So Abraham, what did he do? Look up in the stars, he provided the assist. He changed his name from Abram to Abraham. God dribbles in, scores, Isaac is born. Joshua, I don't know what I'm gonna do. Cities are walled, the people are great on the inside. Joshua, if you'll just march around those walls, this is what you need to do. You need to get an agreement with me. You need to do what I'm telling you to do. You need to obey my word, speak the word, pray in the name of Jesus, fast if you need to. You line up with my word, you follow my kingdom precepts, because if you'll do what I will do, what you need to do, then you're providing an assist for me. You're putting me in position to score. The walls come down. (laughs) David, this giant's nothing for you. David, this giant's nothing. You can take him. You can bring him down. You don't need Saul's armament. You don't need the help of flesh. You don't need his kingly garments. You do the same. You use the same stuff you've already been using to slay the lion and slay the bear. I put in your hand everything you need to bring this giant down. Just lift up to me what you have in your hand because you're moving in. He shoots and he scores and the giant falls. Come on, and everybody goes, ah! (sighs) Crowd goes wild. And that's the way we used to do it, (laughs) playing around in the driveway. He scores. (sighs) I got to help you all out with a little volume this morning. Crowd goes wild. Your assistance to God provides a victory 
for you every time. He never misses. Thank you, my man. Let's bow our heads in the house of God. Amen. Lord, we love you today, and we thank you that, God, you can use all things to communicate truth. Jesus, when you walk the shores of Galilee, you illustrated your sermons through natural things, farming, ranching, seeds, sheep, lost coins. Lord, you use natural things to illustrate spiritual truths. So today we have done that through the use of basketball to once again illustrate how great you are if we will put you first in our lives. Now, Father, what I know, including myself, every one of us in this room today need your assistance in our lives. There are things that are bigger than us, above us, beyond us, that we cannot manipulate and control on our own. God, we need your help. We go back to what your word said as we read earlier from Hebrews 13. You have said, I will never leave you nor forsake you so that I may boldly say, the Lord provides assistance for me. The Lord will help me and assist me, and I will not fear what man can do to me. I will not fear what the devil can do. I will not fear what coronavirus can do. I will not fear stock market crash. I will not fear limited uh, finances. My God is my source, and I will say it loud, and I will say it strong, and I will say it boldly. The Lord is my helper and will continue to be my helper in Jesus' name. Those of you that are in the room today, you've never made him your helper by inviting him into your heart. You're in the room today and your life has been in drift mode and you know he's calling you back to himself. Get jerseyed up, get back on the team, get back on the floor. Find your position. Get back in your lane. God is calling you today, and you know it. Spirit of God is here right now. Or there's something in your life that is running out of control, that is beyond the, your reach and scope and ability to solve. You need the Lord's intervention right now. You need his assistance. All you have to do is call on his name, and God will come through for you today. If you're in any one of those boats, I want to pray for you right now. And if that's you, I want you to lift your hand up, raise it up high right where you are today. Is the Spirit of God speaking to you? I need to get back. Raise it up right now. Raise it up right now. I want to be saved today. I need to get back on, on cor course with the Lord. I need God's assistance in my life today. God bless you, ma'am. God bless you, sir. God bless you, ma'am. God bless you, sir. Raise it up so I can see you. God bless you, ma'am. God bless you, ma'am. God bless you, ma'am. Praise God. Praise God. Well, this is why we come to church today, ladies and gentlemen. You may not realize it, but this is why we gathered here today. Your presence, your energy, your spirit, your agreement, so that people that are far away from God or need to reconnect with God can find God in this place here today. Amen, 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 amen. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for your obedience. Thank you for that. I know it takes courage to raise your hand. Sometimes it feels like the weight of the world is on you and doesn't want you to acknowledge your need for God. But we need him. Oh, how we need him. Now let's pray together today. Somos familia. Everybody pray out loud. I don't care if you raised your hand or not. We will participate in this. Say, Dear God, I call upon your name, the name of Jesus, the only one who can save us. Save us, O oh God. Deliver us from ourselves, from our sin, from Satan, from the devices of this world. Lord God, come inside of us. Live in us. 
Be our Savior. Be our God. Lord, bring us back to that place of fully trusting you. And right now, God, I acknowledge I need your assistance. I open my heart to your help today, and I declare (laughs) you are my helper, and therefore I am helped. (laughs) Amen. Give the Lord praise today. Say this out loud with me. Say this out loud with me. Say, there's more ahead of me than behind me. There are more for me than against me. And there is more good in my life than bad in my life because God is good. Dios es bueno siempre. Gloria a Dios. Hallelujah.